not to be confused with pidgin. A pidgin, or pidgin language, is a grammatically simplified means of communication that develops between two or more groups that do not have a language in common. Typically, its vocabulary and grammar are limited and often drawn from several languages. It is most commonly employed in situations such as trade, or where both groups speak languages different from the language of the country in which they reside, but where there is no common language between the groups. Fundamentally, a pidgin is a simplified means of linguistic communication, as it is constructed impromptu, or by convention, between individuals or groups of people. A pidgin is not the native language of any speech community, but is instead learned as a second language. A pidgin may be built from words, sounds, or body language from a multitude of languages as well as onomatopoeia. As the lexicon of any pidgin will be limited to core vocabulary, words with only a specific meaning in lexifier language may acquire a completely new, or additional, meaning in the pidgin. Pidgins have historically been considered a form of patois, unsophisticated simplified versions of their lexifiers, and as such usually have low prestige with respect to other languages. However, not all simplified or unsophisticated forms of a language are pidgins. Each pidgin has its own norms of usage which must be learned for proficiency in the pidgin. A pidgin differs from a creole, which is the first language of a speech community of native speakers that at one point arose from a pidgin. Unlike pidgins, creoles have fully developed vocabulary and patterned grammar. Most linguists believe that a creole develops through a process of nativization of a pidgin when children of acquired pidgin speakers learn and use it as their native language. Etymology Pidgin derives from a Chinese pronunciation of the English word business, and all attestations from the first half of the 19th century given in the third edition of the Oxford English Dictionary mean business, an action, occupation, or affair. The earliest being from 1807. The term pidgin English, business English, first attested in 1855, shows the term in transition to referring to language, and by the 1860s the term pidgin alone could refer to pidgin English. The term was coming to be used in the more general linguistic sense represented by this article by the 1870s. A popular folk etymology for pigeon is English pigeon, a bird sometimes used for carrying brief written messages, especially in times prior to modern telecommunications. Terminology the word pidgin, formerly also spelled pidgin, used to refer originally to Chinese pidgin English, but was later generalized to refer to any pidgin. Pidgin may also be used as the specific name for local pidgins or creoles, in places where they are spoken. For example, the name of the creole language Tok Pisin derives from the English words Tok Pidgin. Its speakers usually refer to it simply as pidgin. When speaking English. Likewise, Hawaiian Creole English is commonly referred to by its speakers as pidgin. The term jargon has also been used to refer to pigeons, and is found in the names of some pigeons, such as Chinook jargon. In this context, linguists today use jargon to denote a particularly rudimentary type of pigeon, however, this usage is rather rare, and the term jargon most often refers to the words particular to a given profession. Pigeons may start out as or become trade languages, such as Tok Pisin. Trade languages can eventually evolve into fully developed languages in their own right such as Swahili, distinct from the languages they were originally influenced by. Trade languages and pigeons can also influence an established language's vernacular, especially amongst people who are directly involved in a trade where that pigeon is commonly used, which can alternatively result in a regional dialect being developed. Common traits Pigeons are usually less morphologically complex but more syntactically rigid than other languages, usually have fewer morphosyntactic irregularities than other languages. Characteristics shared by most pigeons Typologically most closely resemble isolating languages Uncomplicated clausal structure, e.g., no embedded clauses, etc. Reduction or elimination of syllable codas, reduction of consonant clusters or breaking them with a penthesis, elimination of aspiration or sound changes, 
Monophthongization is common, employment of as few basic vowels as possible, such as a, e, i, o, u. Lack of morphophonemic variation Lack of tones, such as those found in West African, Asian and many North American indigenous languages. Lack of grammatical tense, use of separate words to indicate tense, usually preceding the verb. Lack of conjugation or declension. Use of reduplication to represent plurals, superlatives, and other parts of speech that represent the concept being increased. Development The initial development of a pigeon usually requires prolonged, regular contact between the different language communities, a need to communicate between them, an absence of or absence of widespread proficiency in a widespread, accessible interlanguage. Keith Winham in Himes 1971, suggests that pigeons need three languages to form, with one, the superstrate, being clearly dominant over the others. Linguists sometimes posit that pigeons can become creole languages when a generation of children learn a pigeon as their first language. A process that regularizes speaker-dependent variation in grammar. Creoles can then replace the existing mix of languages to become the native language of a community, such as the Chavacano language in the Philippines, Creole in Sierra Leone, and Tok Pisin in Papua New Guinea. However, not all pigeons become creole languages, a pigeon may die out before this phase would occur, e.g. the Mediterranean lingua franca. Other scholars, such as Salakoko Mufwene, argue that pigeons and creoles arise independently under different circumstances, and that a pigeon need not always precede a creole nor a creole evolve from a pigeon. Pigeons, according to Mufwene, emerged among trade colonies among users who preserved their native vernaculars for their day-to-day -day interactions." Creoles, meanwhile, developed in settlement colonies in which speakers of a European language, often indentured servants whose language would be far from the standard in the first place, interacted extensively with non-European slaves, absorbing certain words and features from the slaves' non-European native languages, resulting in a heavily basilectalized version of the original language. These servants and slaves would come to use the creole as an everyday vernacular, rather than merely in situations in which contact with a speaker of the superstrate was necessary. Examples The following pigeons have Wikipedia articles or sections in articles. Many of these languages are commonly referred to by their speakers as pigeon. See also Ingrish Spanglish Camfranglais Cameroon Hiri Motu Conglish Lingua Franca Mixed Language Macaronic Language Creole Language Notes References Bakker, Peter. 1994. Pigeons. In Arens, Jacques, Mugskin, Peter, Smith, Norval, Pigeons and Creoles, An Introduction, John Benjamins, pp. 26-39. Himes, Dell. 1971. Pigeonization and Creolization of Languages, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-07833-4. McWhorter, John. 2002. The Power of Babel: The Natural History of Language. Random House Group. ISBN 0-06-052085-X. Seba, Mark. 1997. Contact Languages: Pigeons and Creoles. Macmillan. ISBN 0-333-63024-6. Thomason, Sarah G. Kaufman, Terence, 1988, Language Contact, Creolization, and Genetic Linguistics, Berkeley, University of California Press, ISBN 0-520-07893-4 Todd, Loretto, 1990, Pigeons and Creoles, Routledge, ISBN 0-415-05311-0 Further reading 
Home, John, 2000, An Introduction to Pigeons and Creoles, Cambridge University Press. External links Language Varieties website